I like to do well at things. It, it's important to me that if you're given an assignment that you try to do it the best you can. I'm afraid that some people confuse that with some sort of uh, single-mindedness on my part. Uh, Donald Rumsfeld uh, went into the company after he left Washington, after Ford lost, and uh, that would be uh, in uh, 1977. Is in business, and uh, he was the congressman from there. And then he went to the White House, where he was White House Chief of Staff, and then he became the Se Secretary of Defense. And he's involved in a whole group of people around Chicago that are, um, uh, they're involved in a whole range of things, national security being one of them. He was also a part of the Rand Corporation, one of the major defense think tanks. He's a very, he's a very, um, uh, he's a very, uh, uh, bright guy, like in the best and the brightest, you know, the kind of people that brought us Vietnam. These are people who believe that thinking is the primary way that you get through life. Having values, feelings, and so forth, they denigrate. So, he took over this company, and it was in, it was going down the tubes completely. It had FDA investigations, it had, um, it had, uh, uh, a grand jury investigations, it was losing money, its stock was down, a, f a person was hired, to come in and explain why the FDA was so down on them and went through all of their records and said, you guys haven't got a chance. This company is, is a mess, a total mess. And he went in with a full team of politicians. He went in with himself, a politician. Uh, he brought his special assistant who was uh, uh, a, a Republican Party operative, worked with the Republican National Committee, brought in a press guy from there, brought in lawyers, and they took on the issue of this company as a political issue. And um, one of the first things that he, not first, but somewhere in that first year, it was late in the year, he called me and said, let's have a meeting. So I went and I met with him. We flew into the Madison Hotel and we met with, and we met and we talked. And my point was that the uh, struggle that was going on around NutraSuite was a scientific struggle. We needed to know the scientific answers. And this was before the public in court of inquiry had ruled. We needed to know the answers. So why don't we, the people who were raising all of the questions about NutraSuite, and the company together create a, um, a set of protocols that we would agree address the serious questions that needed to be looked at to decide whether or not it should be, be marketed. So we had this meeting. At the, at the time that uh, uh, they put their uh, evidence into FDA in, 19, um, in 1973, there were no requirements at FDA to examine effects on the brain from food additives. No requirements whatsoever. So there never was a study done to look at whether or not this affected the brain in, uh, in a neurological sense. The cancer studies were incidental. Those were cancer studies. But these were not brain studies. The cancer studies turned up brain tumors. But they didn't look, for example, at these holes in the brain or mental retardation or uh, lowering the ability of people to think or causing dizziness or blindness or any of those things. None of that was looked at. And uh, we were proposing that we design some studies to look at it. And, um, and uh, we had a very good, very full and frank exchange. His scientists kept jumping up and running around the room and saying, there's no problem, there's no problem, there's no problem. Ultimately, he made the decision not to find out what the facts were, but to move forward on the limited record that they had before them. And I believe it was a decision that was made that said, we can, uh, we can accomplish our ends better legally and politically than we can by actually doing the science to determine the outcome of the questions that are being asked. And in my mind, that demonstrated that he was an individual not interested in facts, not interested in the truth, not interested in finding out what the fundamental realities are, but much, much more interested in setting a goal and then, and then by will and force pulling all the resources that he could possibly pull together to achieve that goal, i.e. get NutraSuite on the market and sold. And so Donald Rumsfeld had been all these, in the, all these meetings and known um, – all of these potentially harm, very harmful effects of this substance that he then went on and continued to market? Well, I, I, I can't say what Donald Rumsfeld knew or didn't know. Uh, he's not a scientist. He's not very interested in science, from what I can tell. More or less, uh, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a fixer. He's, a, he's, a, uh, he's a, um, an operative. He, he, uh, you assign him a job, and he goes and he does it. Uh, now, I'm, I'm sure that as he gets up into the level of Defense Department, he, he sort of makes up his own jobs and says, I'm going to do these things. But, the, but facts are not all that important to how he proceeds because he's so confident that he knows what the outcome should be that he will look, across, at least in the way he did a neutral he looked across 
the horizon to find all those facts that would support his position and then minimized or denigrated all the facts that didn't support his position. In 1980, the Public Board of Inquiry voted unanimously to reject the use of aspartame until additional studies could be done on aspartame's potential to cause brain tumors. The product was, uh, was uh, said not to be, it was ruled by law, it was said you cannot market this product. And then they had to go and do uh, put political triage and get in there and manipulate the process. So, I mean, the, the manipulation was so powerful that uh, the first, one of the first things that Ronald Reagan did when he became president was suspend the authority of the FDA commissioner to take any actions. So he was sworn in in whatever day in January, and the next day he issued a, a, an executive order eliminating the FDA commissioner's authority to take actions. Uh, there was obviously a fear on the part of somebody that the commissioner was going to do something about NutraSweet or something else that would create difficulty, because it took him a while to get a new commissioner. It took him over, a little over a month to get a new commissioner, get the old one out and the new one in. And in that month, the old commissioner was prevented from taking any actions by an executive order. And that, that, that takes a high level of political clout to do that. But that's political triage on a situation that had gone sour uh, uh, because Rumsfeld had made the decision to um, uh, just power his way through and, and ignore getting the facts. Mm -hmm.